head tracking with the DJI goggles too, and also that other the other goggles what were they called en Enviro or Envir I forget what they were called. They got a funny name. With the motion controller Mark Two, right? I've been interested in that, right? And the thing that interested me most about it, I finally found the answer to the question that, that I was most interested in about the the head tracking feature. And the answer came to me in a video from Flight Path. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you, if not all of you, are subscribed to Flight Path, Flight Path's video channel, right? Uh, if you're not, Mark is going to put the link up to Flight Path's channel. Please go ahead and subscribe. Right, so that's Flight Path's banner. That's his channel. And I, I messaged him. Well, I sent him an email, actually, uh, asking him, if it was okay for me to use a wee portion of his his most recent video that he did, which is about track it, the head tracking feature using the goggles too and the motion control too and the Mini 3 Pro because DJI have now opened up the motion controller and the goggles too to the Mini 3 Pro. And the head tracking feature has always been something that I thought that's really, really interesting because I thought, does this mean that it can be two things, right? There's two ways the head tracking could have worked in my, and when I was thinking about it, and one was that you controlled the direction the drone would fly by just looking at it. You know, it would go down or up, or, and I thought, well, that's fair enough, but, you know, a bit, a bit dangerous. What if somebody taps you in the shoulder and you turn around and suddenly the, the drone hooks round, right? And the other, the other option was that you would control the direction of the drone with a motion controller, but it would allow you to look around as the drone is flying. Like, just imagine you were Top Gun, you were Maverick, right, in your aircraft, and you're flying the straight line forward, but you decide to look over there and wave at Iceman, but the your, your drone <laughs> that you're flying would continue in a straight line. And I thought, that would be fantastic for a few reasons. One of the reasons I'm going to talk about that there's... I think it impacts VLOS. And I'll tell you why in a minute. But before that, I'm going to show you the little clip from Flight Path. But as you can see here, so I'm going towards where that circle is pointed, but I can actually look this way. I can look all the way around. The drone is now turning around, but I'm still going in the same direction. So I can look to the right. And that's me over there, my home point. Look back, and the drone keeps going straight because... I'm, I need to control the drone with the motion controller. So the head tracking just really helps you be able to look around just like that. And, but you're still using the remote control, the motion controller to pilot the drone as far as direction goes. Right, so that, that was a fantastic video. I, you know, watch, please go over and watch the entire video. It's great. It's, he, he goes into quite a bit of depth about it. But the, <clears throat> the bit that really interested me was this idea that you can fly the drone forward and you can look all around as it's flying forward. Now, let's talk about the implications that that may have on VLOS. Because I found another, another article here, and I'm going to show you that. I'll bring this article up. And this article here, right? And 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 I'll say I'll say all of the I'll, I'll say all of the reference all the references to the article are here, right? But it's about VLOS, right? And it tells you here, right? VLOS is when the remote pilot is able to clearly see the unmanned aircraft or drone and the surrounding airspace always at any point while it's airborne. In a nutshell, this is the important bit. In a nutshell. The main objective of VLOS is to ensure that the operator has full awareness of the drone's position movements and surroundings and can make ac accurate, <laughs> accurate judgments about its trajectory and potential hazard. Right, here's the resources if you want to screenshot that or whatever, you can do that later on. Right, but he, so here's the, here's the let, let's have a heated debate. <laughs> so here's the debate, right? VLOS is has to has to change with the the advances in technology. Okay, it, it, it simply has to, right? As does le all legislation. All legislation has to change 
as technology increases. Now, the whole point of the not the whole point, but one of the main parts of having a VLOS requirement, according to the CAA and the FAA, is that the operator of the unmanned aircraft vehicle, i.e. the drone, has to be able to see the, su the surrounding airspace around the drone to make sure there are no incoming other aircraft. Now, with the, the recent development of head tracking, which allows you, in effect, not in effect, it allows you to be flying drone and look all around the entire airspace round about the drone. And that way you, you can be sure no matter how far away it is from you, even if it's out of your sight, you can still tell what the surrounding air, airspace is like. You can still tell if there are any aircraft in the area, even when the drone is out of your visual line of sight. Now, you're all going to be thinking, I but the v loss regulations say this, blah, 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 blah. And I agree with you. They do say that that is not, is, is, is not allowed. But there's just been a jump in technology that now allows us to be aware of the airspace round about us when the drone is not within our visual line of sight. That must have an impact on the regulations. If it doesn't, that means that no matter how advanced the technology becomes, there can never be a change in the VLOS regulations. That's not right. And it, and it's not it's not it's not the way the law and regulations work. The way that the law and regulations work is that they develop and change according to time going past, new technology, new devices coming into play. So I'm not saying that that this is going to going to allow you to see the drone if it's out of sight because if the, if the drone is beyond your visual line of sight, you can't see the drone. But you will be able to see the airspace around the drone when the drone is out of visual line of sight. So therefore, you're already saying that half of the reason that you need to have visual line of sight, which is to be able to see the airspace around the drone, is can now be fulfilled without you actually having the, the drone and the drone itself in visual line of sight. So what do you think about that? What, what, what do you think? Is, is there room here for a possibility of the VLOS, the VLOS regulation being rewritten or possibly a change there or some, some kind of adaptation in that. I, I think there's there's room for something. I don't know what yet, but I thought I thought that was really interesting. An interesting point. E even even as an advance warning about future future technology, I I'm going like starting to feel like Matthew Brennan. You know, oh, he, he, here we have this, and here we have this, uh, and this is here, and this is here, and that's here. We here we have it. <laughs> he, 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 does, he does a lot of his entire videos. <laughs> his hands up here. I always think somebody's standing behind his camera with a gun, saying, "Geez, your wallet." Matthew, because watch watch his videos. The next time you see his hand, his hands are always up here like this. Anyway, 